Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism, narcissistic relationships, and narcissistic healing. So let's take on today's issue. I know that many people watching this channel have or had a narcissistic parent or parents, and it is a rough ride. You had to silence yourself to grow up like this. You had to shapeshift who you are who you wanted to be and what they wanted you to be. You learn to either be useful or stay out of the way or be what they need you to be. You learn to silence your needs, your preferences, your hopes, your aspirations, and your sense of self. A childhood like this meant bouncing between guilt, fear, sadness, anxiety, glimpses of good days when perhaps things were going well for the narcissistic parent, and even as you grew into adolescence and then adulthood, it was clear that you were either just an extension of them or an inconvenience. And you may have become accustomed to manipulations that would play upon guilt and either manipulative gambits, just such as how much was sacrificed for you or how you have had it so much easier than they did or how you owe them so much. Narcissistic parents can run one way or another. One is that they become completely detached and disinterested once you hit adulthood. And that may be because then they have other sources of supply or things that keep them busy. Or they remain, they remain over-involved with terrible boundaries and may even leave you feeling bad or guilty for wanting to pursue your own interests or move away. While in more severe cases of childhood narcissistic abuse, it may be major boundary violations that clearly qualify as abuse and may even culminate in post-traumatic stress or complex trauma. That certainly happens in a subset of cases, and that's it's actually, it's, it's, a heavier set of clinical issues for the client and any therapist working with them. However, for the vast majority of folks who experience childhood narcissistic abuse, it's at that moderate or mild moderate level. And you, watching this video, may even be in this situation. Many people may look back at these childhoods and say, it was uncomfortable and anxiety inducing and unhappy and confusing and I even felt ashamed because my family just felt so weird and uncomfortable. You may look back and wish that your parents would have been more engaged or noticed you or had interest in you or interest in your aspirations or who you were or just liked you for who you were. And you may look back and resent that your parents' needs always came first, that vacations were taken in the name, if you even took them, but if they were taken in the name of what your parent was interested in, or dinner was at a time that worked for the narcissistic parent, or the narcissistic parent had little interest in anyone else in the family, but expected the family to drop what they were doing and go pay homage when the narcissistic parent wanted to share something or just hold court. You may have witnessed betrayals, such as a narcissistic parent cheating on your other parent or do shady stuff with money or th the way they did their work or their job. But you may not have ever thought to use the word abuse to describe your childhood. You may have felt that the word abuse, especially in childhood, was really reserved for people who had experienced some form of physical abuse or violation that it resulted in bruises. This is not meant to be a video about the semantics of the word abuse. Many people don't feel that they have the right to use it, even when, in the vast majority of these cases, it clearly does apply. Abuse isn't about intensity, but also duration. And while I agree that most mental health folks or even lay people will not classify one episode of invalidation from another person as abuse, when that kind of invalidation happens, every single day, especially during a person's childhood, as a sense of self develops, I'm going to argue that it would qualify. But what about the other thing that narcissistic parents do? Using their own child to sort of regulate, so sharing the parent sharing problems with a child, becoming passive aggressive if you as a child didn't give them your full attention, 
I remember one person telling me that when she was around like five or six, she had had a tough day at school and was just feeling a little down. And her father had done something around the house and wanted her to admire something he had done. He had fixed something. I think it was like made a shelf or something. And she was five. She was five, guys, okay? Five and having a bad day. And she just sort of looked at it and sort of shrugged and didn't really care. It's not a five-year-old's job to care, least of all about a home repair. She recalled her narcissistic father just going off on her for not admiring his new shelf enough. These are the parents that will become sullen if you don't admire them enough. Or they will scream, just like it happened with this gal, if you don't respond the way they want to their wonderful thing. Or they will ruin a child's special day because a parent themselves is having a bad day. These poor kids, the, the narcissistic parent might make them a birthday cake and if the child doesn't admire it enough, forget it. I think, I personally think that that's emotional misuse. Listen, if an adult is having a bad day and wants to have a sullen tantrum with another adult, that's still not great, but the other adult could handle it. But using a child as a sounding board or to regulate or to hold the parent's disappointment or sadness, that's the misuse of a child. It's not what a child's psyche is designed to handle. Children are not made to soothe their parents or reassure them or fill their egos or take care of them. Children have enough damn stuff to do to learn, especially in the world we're in now, to just become themselves than have to be subjugated and relegated to having to take care of a damned parent. That, to me, is a misuse of the child. I am sure many think, nah, it's abuse, and I tend to agree with you. But for those of you out there who think, well, Maybe a parent just over-relying or leaning on a child, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's just not what a child's made for, asking them to do what they're not designed to do. Sure, and that's where, okay, then use the damn word misuse. It's all semantics. I'm always trying to help survivors find language that will get them out of those kinds of loops of justification and rationalization and will capture the essence of when you have a narcissistic parent, regardless of what that parent's backstory is, and I know many, many parents out there have had tough backstories, but that to subjugate a child for the parent's needs, you want to call it abuse or simply term it, like what I'm saying, emotional misuse, it's not what a child is designed to handle. And the narcissistic person is not able to discriminate between a child or other adults. The narcissistic person just needs supply and they're going to get it from wherever they can. Anyhow, I have no doubt that many of you, many of us, were emotionally misused when we were kids by the narcissists around us. You were asked to step up and endure psychological stuff in a way that your psyches and your minds were simply not prepared to do, that no child is designed to do. The healing for someone coming out of narcissistic abuse like this is about recognizing none of this is your fault. You're not to blame and that you never need, even as an adult, to be another person's tool of regulation. Another person using you to soothe themselves, even in adulthood, to me that qualifies as emotional misuse and in most cases also abuse. Fully formed adults regulate themselves and have reciprocal interactions with other adults when they need to work something through. You talk it out in a balanced way and both people hear each other. But narcissistic adults sort of view everyone as pacifiers to turn to when they need to calm down. I hope that framing helps just more language to talk about this and whether you call this misuse, abuse, for this to happen to a child and frankly even to an adult to be basically a human pacifier because a narcissistic person cannot put on their big person psychological pants. None of us are designed for that. And it's time that we hold people who are damn adults, hold their feet to the fire and say, figure it out and stop taking it out on other people, least of all children. Thanks again.